Hello, hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Welcome to everybody who's in the chat right now. Welcome to the members who've joined the channel as well. If you do not see the join button on my channel, go down into the description of this video and you will see a link to join membership if you so choose to do that. Thank you all for being here. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After a Cult where I talk about the news that has the internet buzzing in regard to Scientology and share about my 35 years in Scientology and how I left with three generations of my family. When you hit that subscribe button, be sure to set the notification bell as well because I jump in at different times and do interviews with people that you might find really interesting as well. I try to bring a perspective of an understanding of the Scientology mindset and fill in some of those blanks to help people understand. Because I feel the more we can understand Scientology and Scientologists, maybe the more we can help them leave as well. So appreciate that. If you would also hit the like button on your way in and help us get those notifications out. Thank you so much to my mods who are here today. I know that Nancy's here. I believe my Tony is here as well. We got all kinds of stuff to jump into. And uh, just a note, later on today, if you're catching this on Monday at 4 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be doing an interview with Jenna Miscavige that I think will be very enlightening and a lot of fun. So if you can join us live, do. Otherwise, be sure to catch it on the replay. And if you are catching this on the replay, jump into the comments. Tell me where you're watching from. Let me know what your questions are. What are your thoughts on everything that we talk about? Join in on the conversation because every everybody who shows up to watch, to like, to subscribe, to contribute their thoughts and ideas, all the ways that you support not just my channel, but the different SPTV creators is hugely, hugely appreciated. All right, we're going to jump into a bunch of stuff. We have a lot to cover today. We are going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about some Scientology propaganda and how there is a uh, somebody in the skating world who is tied to Scientology and some recent propaganda that he was involved in. We're going to hit on some protest news, of course, around the country. And we are going to talk about some emails that recently got released by Miriam Francis having to do with Mike Rinder and John Atak. And that an interview that we've been talking about for a few days now. Go ahead and put question in all caps and have your question follow so we can track those easily. Vintage Mama of Three, thank you so much for that. Hip, hip, hooray, SPTV board member. <laughs> yes, the website is out and I am on the board for the SPTV Foundation. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a wild ride and I'm excited to bring more awareness and help raise some money for it so that we can help people leaving Scientology. Serendipity 247, hip, hip, hooray for you. Thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. Truly appreciate that support. So let's start with that Scientology propaganda that we were talking about. Get ready to say a whole bunch of what? <laughs> because that is a lot of what this is. But first, you got to understand, Scientology writes these press releases, which they get out to these different press wires and things and online publications. I'm not totally sure how that part works, but they seem to pick it up as content. So they'll appear in these strange places, but they're written by Scientology because it is part of their propaganda. So let's take a look at one that I grabbed out of, uh, where'd I grab this out of? Richmond Register. And this is Arizona Interfaith Movement honors Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the Church of Scientology. This was just a couple days ago that this press release was put out. And it looks like here, let's see here. Uh, yep, so you see right here, this is a press release from Scientology. 2024 marks the 70th anniversary of the Church of Scientology, the world's youngest major religion. <laughs> I love that. The world's youngest major religion. And Phoenix played a pivotal role, celebrating the historic occasion where Arizona Interfaith Movement Executive Director, Dr. Albert Celosa, we'll go with that, President Reverend Rock Fremont, Spiritual Director of the Shepherd of the Hills United Church of Christ, AZIFM Administrative Assistant Ann Taylor, and members of many Phoenix faiths. Now, 
we have seen before, we have seen before how Scientology infiltrates these interfaith groups. We saw it happen in Ventura. In fact, Diane from More Fun Than Staying at Home, that's her channel here on YouTube. Diane was one of our early Scientology spies, not so secret. She was here on the channel sharing everything and Scientology continued to email her and call her. Now I think they just sent her snail mail, but Diane shared with us, it, she was involved with this interfaith community in Ventura. And it does seem that Scientology is infiltrating different interfaith communities to gain some type of legitimacy. And what happened in Ventura is they never actually helped with anything. They just tried to recruit people to do their volunteering so they could send out these press releases. <laughs> so that's kind of what that is about. But if you're in the Arizona area and you feel so moved in fact, even if you're not, some people might want to reach out and just ask these people if they're aware that Scientology is a human trafficking cult, but send them some information. You can send them links to videos, other news articles. Uh, I think news articles are often impactful for people in uh, those types of community circles that they may or may not know. We're going to go with the assumption that they don't know. So again, this is in Arizona, and if you, I have links down below to all of this. So if you want to go look at that later and send some emails or reach out and be like, hey, you seem like you know people really trying to help in your community. Are you aware that this group that you're aligning yourselves with of the things that they've done, that they have histories, decades, since the inception of Scientology, there have been abuses within Scientology. So there's that. If anybody want to pick, wants to pick that up for homework. And we have a little bit more Scientology propaganda here. And again, this is from a press release that Scientology themselves did. This one is in uh, West Orlando News. Church of Scientology celebrates exponential expansion in Clearwater. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't laugh, but it's just hard to have a straight face and say that. Exponential expansion. More Scientologists than ever before filled Ruth Eckert Hall in Clearwater for this annual birthday party celebration. Following a 30-minute performance by a superlative band, joined by soloists, dancers, and even Grammy Award-winning bassist, bassist Stanley Clark, as well as fireworks, they must have done the fireworks outside. They couldn't have done them indoors, right? David Miscavige, chairman of the board, Religious Technology Center, took the stage to celebrate the birthday of L. Ron Hubbard. Hip, hip, hooray. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting. It's it's pretty, You can read the whole thing down below. I thought there was something else that kind of stood out to me. <laughs> As Miscavige alluded, the birthday celebration included an quote, expansionist destiny. <laughs> I will tell you what, Scientology is good at coming up with the world word salad and some interesting phrases. So here's the thing. Here's what was released at this March 13th, L. Ron Hubbard birthday, because at their propaganda events, there's always some big release that all the Scientologists have to buy. He was speaking of the golden age of administration, the chapter in the church's golden age. Miscavige referred back to milestones from which we'll never look back. The golden age of knowledge and golden age of tech phase two. And added, even still, there yet remains one final component to the full golden, golden age equation. Oh my goodness. The golden age of administration, he said, complements and amplifies all others, ultimately bringing the entire golden age to fruition. You know, one of the announcers, I still think that he does it, is uh, Jeff Pomerantz. He, I think he was an actor, but he does a lot of the voiceover stuff for Scientology. And I, I feel like I could give him a run for his money. You know, maybe I should offer, hey, let me, <laughs> let me do your voiceover Scientology. I will give you my best, my best Jeff Pomerantz. Uh, let's see. And yes, as of LRH's birthday tonight, we have achieved liftoff. This is the one that brings them all to full blossom. I mean, that's pretty good, right? Tell me in the comments. Tell me in the chat, especially my ex-Scientologist. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. It's just about Miscavige went around, opened some other organizations and all that, but it is there down below to read in full if you would like more Scientology propaganda. And speaking of Scientology propaganda, people, if you are in the skateboard world or you know somebody who is, they may be familiar with, uh, what's his name? Steve Barra? Steve Barra. I was not familiar with Steve Barra in the Scientology world or the skating world, because this might come as a shock to you, but uh, I do not do the skateboarding. I don't have great health insurance and cannot be taken a spill or a tumble. <laughs> but I am amazed by the talent though. I just, I see these kids and young people and even, I even have seen people my age skateboarding and I'm amazed at the talent behind it. And it reminds me a lot of surfing. I grew up in Hawaii and, uh, yeah, the two seem similar, what people are able to do, and I'm often blown away by it. But this Steve Barra guy, okay, before I show you the Scientology propaganda that he is involved in, let's just take a look at a little clip, a little clip here to tell us, this is from Skate or Die, and it's, why do skaters hate Steve Barra? So I didn't even know this, right? I just saw Steve Barra doing some Scientology propaganda and thought, well, maybe he's involved in it. I don't know. I looked into it. He he was married to Juliette Lewis, who, as far as I know, is not an active Scientologist today, but she grew up in Scientology, was a Scientologist for many, many years. She was married to Steve Barra. Maybe that's how he got in. I do not know. But this skater guy who seems to know what he's saying about uh, stuff in the skateboard world shares a little bit about Steve Barra. Check it out. Wait. Roughly around the time that Steve joined Alien Workshop, he did two things that would haunt him to this day and be the main reason for people hating on him. Firstly, he joined the church that everybody joins when you're a professional skateboarder. Um, you guessed it, Scientology. He seems to have joined because his wife at the time was a Scientology celebrity, whatever that means. And today it's pretty unclear if Steve Barry is still a part of Scientology like he used to be and still doing all that. Scientology stuff, which just seems to be donating an obscene amount of money to the church. So yeah, I'm not going to bother going in depth on Scientology or why it's bad or why people don't like it because there's plenty of other videos out there like that. So if you want to watch it, go ahead. I don't care. Plenty of videos out there like that to fill people in on what Scientology is. And he is correct about that. So let's take a look at the recent Scientology propaganda that Steve Barrow was involved in. Now, the action itself, I think is a great thing. Skateboard legend Steve Barra partners with LAPD Hollywood Division for charitable skateboard giveaway. Giving kids who don't have access and wouldn't otherwise have, whether it's toys, even skateboards, I think that's a fantastic thing to do. I don't care who you are, even if you are Scientology, if Scientology is actually really doing the heavy lifting. What we've seen in the past is they will provide a space for something to happen or partner with somebody doing the actual work and then take credit for it. Maybe they actually really, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe Scientology actually was more involved in the skateboard giveaway. But this says here, uh, this again was just a couple days ago, at least that's when the press release was put out. As part of a toy giveaway in Hollywood for underserved youth, organized by the Church of Scientology Celebrity Center in conjunction with LAPD Hollywood Youth Development Programs, Scientologist and legendary skateboarder Steve Barra donated signature skateboards, hoodies, and Barra's Barracks, Kariuma, I don't know what that is, some kind of skate shoes, and what could be more appropriate in town, what, and what could be more appropriate in a town known as the birthplace of modern skateboarding? Okay, this is a Scientology press release. Now, you know me, you know I don't like to nitpick, but I'm going to nitpick. And maybe I do like to nitpick when it comes to Scientology. What is this? This grammar here, starting the sentence off with the word and like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. It's like they're not even checking anymore. You know what? Back in my day in Scientology, we had to do a course that took well over a year and study all this grammar. The book was like this thick. We had to clear every basic word in the English language. And now I feel like they're not even trying. You're not even trying Scientology. As part of a toy giveaway in Hollywood for underserved youth, okay, so that kind of, we kind of read that, Hollywood police officers mentor at-risk youth and organize educational and athletic activities. Officers not only serve as positive role models, they also promote academic achievement and leadership skills youth need to create their own future. 
Well, hopefully they're not also teaching them how to harass protesters and show favoritism to a human trafficking cult. Let's see. The Church of Scientology Celebrity Center supports these LAPD programs with giveaways like this and annual Christmas Stories fundraisers that have raised more than $500,000 for these community programs since 1993. Yeah, so I guess he is still a Scientologist. The uh, skater guy was kind of questioning that, it looks like, and he's still involved in promoting Scientology and spreading, yeah, information about a human trafficking cult. But we will make the assumption that because he's in Scientology, he might not be aware of it. These celebrities are treated differently. I don't know. Whatever. He could find out. At the end of the day, it is true that in Scientology, Scientologists don't know a lot of this because they're not allowed to look and they're brainwashed into believing that discipline and certain things done in Scientology are not abuses or human rights violation, but that they're just ways to keep people in the fold and save them, save them. So, yeah, but they could look at any time and they still choose not to, but the brainwashing is strong. I didn't look for a long time. I'll tell you that. Let's go take a look at, um, this is the Scientology Money Project, Jeff Augustine. He did a, a video that was interesting because... It's about social engineering, and we're just going to look at a clip, but there's a link down below so you can check out the whole thing. I thought it was kind of interesting. Check it out. One main goal of social engineering is to gain the victim's trust. This can be done by lying, indoctrination, impersonation, threats, urgency, and the use of many other psychological warfare and disinformation techniques. Now, Scientology has employed psychological war and warfare and disinformation techniques and it does it internally and externally and so i want to look at that again and so look at these elements of scientology and 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 the other groups as well but we're focusing on scientology here because why we're the scientology money project but the work can certainly go beyond go beyond uh scientology um it, it's interesting. He gets into that social engineering aspect and Scientology and how that plays together. So give it a watch if you have a moment. Link down below to all these videos. Uh, I love this next video. I love this next clip. The lore of DOA was doing a hammock interview with Lara FM, and they got into talking about the origin of the term squirrel in Scientology. And uh, yeah, just more about that because you sometimes hear protesters described as the squirrel squad, which came out because there was an email leaked. We just talked about her earlier, Diane, my favorite used to be Scientology spy from more fun than staying at home. And Diane leaked an email where Scientology referred to the protesters as squirrels. Because anyone who is spreading the gospel as he knew is a squirrel in Scientology. Anybody who alters the technology of Scientology is a squirrel. They'll call people speaking out against Scientology squirrels because they share the clear cognition and these confidential things in Scientology. So Lara gets into a bit about that. Let's give this a little listen here. It's the same way. Squirrel in Scientology is a very harsh, uh, to call somebody a squirrel, it means like you're altering l ron hubbard's technology you're taking it and and not doing as he said oh really yeah so it's a it's in policy letters and things that he or technical bulletins whatever the f writings that l ron hubbard wants to call them he called them actual squirrels literally and, squirrels so uh, it makes me freaking laugh that literally doa is in a squirrel outfit right now in his <laughs> hammock and that there are so many people that love to just show up in squirrel outfits now because maybe they don't want to sh- be really known or they really just want to support and they don't want to show their face some of them can be really famous people and they don't want to show their face they're so sick of scientology though and they and they've seen the corruption in hollywood and in, and and the cover-up so they so they zip up their little thing and they're squirrels so everybody i just love it like that's the humor and instead of being negative or as they say aggressive we're wearing those squirrel outfits based on words that they use like (laughs) i love that i love that and if you don't know doa does these hammock interviews with his hammock right in front of the blue buildings which is just classic classic doa just whip out the hammock do a little glamping right there on the sidewalk next to scientology (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Such a good one. Uh, 
Tori Magoo, 44, she is an OG protester when it comes to Scientology, raising awareness. She has fought for decades to expose Scientology as a human trafficking cult that they are. And Tori was outside Scientology in Burbank. We're going to take a little look at what she saw and what she had to say when she was out there. You see the Scientology thing? I'm out in front of the Church of Scientology on Burbank Boulevard. And there's nobody there. I mean, it's like, <laughs> no, hello, hello. Anyway, it's it's just funny for me that, I don't know. I don't know what, somehow I always think there's going to be people there and there just never are. It's like dead, 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 dead. Here, let's let you look at it again. See, nobody. There's one truck in front of me and I pulled in front of that truck and there's nothing in front of that. Here, let's see. Let's do that. I just love that she's out there filming and sharing. Get over to her channel and subscribe because not only is Tori Magoo 44 active today in spreading awareness and knowledge about Scientology, but she has done so for decades and she has some really amazing stories and information that might really, well, not might, it will really increase your, your understanding of how Scientology you know, fights back, tries to, tries to deal with. <laughs> squirrels and suppressives and all that because Scientology has to follow the same rule book that L. Ron Hubbard wrote. They can't do anything different. That's part of their whole belief system that source, source, L. Ron Hubbard is source and we must follow everything he says, even down to what we should feed our newborn babies and our babies, barley formula, which he came up with which might blow your mind when you hear what goes into it. If I remember right, it was barley. You made the water, you added caro syrup, and then I think your choice of milk. But that's just as an example. Scientologist, and I know because when I was in Scientology, I did. He even said how to wash a car, how to do this, how to do that. Mostly in the C organization for that stuff through what were called flag orders. But they got to follow it. They have to follow it. Now let's go over to Chicago where there was an interesting conversation interesting indeed i thought so with a scientologist that took the time to have a conversation and i always say you know what props to the scientologists who are willing to have a conversation at least up until the point where somebody comes and drags them off exit stage left you know what i'm saying they may as well have one of those giant hooks so they don't even need to leave the front door and just hook it around the person and drag them back in because that is what it feels like when they do this. But first, let's take a look at what she had to say. Do you, can you tell us anything good about the church that you've gotten out of it? You know, you know, you know what you need to do? Go and do it. Just anything. Just anything. And see if it's for you. If it's not, that's fine. No, I understand that. But my question is this. Um, of all the people that I know that have had to leave. <laughs> no, that's fine. Of all the people I know that have had to leave the church and and the the uh, intimidation and and constant stalking tactics, but also just cutting off family members, and even with people that family members, oh, and the abuse that the children that left have gotten, you're saying nobody got abused? No, no, no. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I Is, okay. This is one of the more honest conversations I think I've heard with a Scientologist. Because she says he's talking about the abuse of children and is saying like, well, you, are you saying that that didn't happen? And she says, no, I'm not saying that at all. Please speak for myself. No, no. And I understand that. And I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything. A lot of people mm -hmm. do a lot of talking about a lot of things. You know, like right. the news. That, mm -hmm. So unless it happened to me, I don't. I do know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> So that's the daughter who grabs her bag and you can tell she's like, oh my gosh, I need to get my mom out of here. What's happening? What's happening? And we're going to look at another clip where you can tell they're just trying to get, get her out of there. They don't grab her right away. There's a staff member who's just standing there because you know, that's not creepy. That's not creepy at all. You can't really hear as well on this one, but we're looking more at the visual. We're going to listen to them. Yeah. Just like we listen to you. You have a good experience that I was talking with you. You did something to me. I told you to leave. And I haven't seen anybody else. 
Oh. Yes. <laughs> Double body body routing. Double body routing. Nice. That is awesome. So and then the staff member goes about his business. But uh yeah, the daughter was just dragging her away. Interesting that the staff member wasn't. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if they're finally like, all right. I don't know, did did David Miscavige that they have a meeting in the morning and be like, look. Enough of these videos of staff members dragging Scientologists back into the building. Knock that off. Make their family members do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just, he could have done that. Maybe that's not his style. I don't know. But it always makes me question like, hey, what's the deal? And yeah, Anna, daughter's more active in routing her than the staff member. He'll be in trouble. I think that could, that could possibly be the case. Possibly be the case. Free Zenu Project says he told us we were jerks. The the staff member did? He said you were jerks? Well, I guess he has an opinion. <laughs> and from his perspective, you, I mean, from his perspective, we are jerks, all of us, from where he sits. But one day, one day in the not so distant future, he might realize, just like Tori Magoo 44, remember, she handled protesters. When she was in Scientology, she was on the other side of that line and she crossed the line and came across. So it happens. It happens, my friends. It does happen. Let's take a look at Trashy V12 BMW, also in Chicago. He, uh, This is something we've talked about before. I wanted to highlight it again because it is so important. And this is a topic of the purification rundown, which in my opinion, Scientologists should not be doing because of the high levels of niacin that they are forced to take and spend five hours a day in a sauna, not under any type of medical direction or supervision. And uh, that this is being done with children is next level. What the heck? Check it out. Oh my God, you guys. This is messed up. This is messed up. This is messed up. The purification rundown should not be being done on kids. Oh my God. God, you guys. Just for a second time there, you see that there, that they're being, they're recruiting children to have children, recruiting their parents, children themselves to do the purification rundown. It's just wrong. One of many things that is wrong. Now let's go over to Portland where a woman went into Scientology to spread kindness and was asked to leave. Are we surprised by this? It's a quick clip. Check it out. Wow. Kindness is inspiring. And they asked you to leave. Kindness is, is inspiring. She said, kindness is inspiring. Can you please leave? <laughs> Again, nothing weird or culty about that at all. Kindness is inspiring. Get out. Get out. Suppressive squirrel. <laughs> It always reminds me of, you guys remember that movie, The Body Snatchers? I'm talking the original with what's his name? Uh, what's his name? With the mustache and the curly blonde hair. Somebody tell me in the chat. But the, that's how I always feel when, you know, somebody in Scientology gets upset or is trying to point out a suppressive. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. All right. Let's go take another look at Portland here when Scientology called the Portland police, but the police said, you know what? You're good. You're good. So fail Scientology on your police tech. Your police tech failed. The further you move away from the main hubs of Scientology, the less support you're going to get from law enforcement, at least in the way that Scientology will still work to manipulate and put pressure on them. That's why with the protesters, I love it how Pearl Snappy does it too. She she finds out what the laws are. She knows the rules and the laws and they are there and they back her up and support her activities. So always learn the laws and the rules in the area that you are if you are going to protest Scientology because you should not be breaking the law or doing anything that is illegal. All right, check this out. 
your property. Or not. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we haven't even gone anywhere near the windows or anything. Like basically the, where the roof ends on top. Okay. Um, but yeah. As long as you guys aren't there, you guys are fine to be here. Okay. You smell nice, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not even really yelling today, so yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. She's like, that's fine. No biggie. Have a great day. Just stay off their property, which is an own thing. Stay off the property. Stay off the property. Stay off the property. And most protesters know that. We're going to take a look in Switzerland. The SP chef shares about being a child in the Sea Org in the UK. He's got a whole map. He shares a whole schedule of what a day in the life was like. So if you were curious about that, I highly recommend you get over and watch his whole video because uh, he really lays it out. We're just going to take a look at a little piece of it. You have such a thing as the SEOC in Scientology, which is sort of the elite level of being a staff member where you dedicate yourself completely, where you sign a contract for one uh, billion years. And uh, because the idea behind it is that when you pass away this life, you will come back one lifetime after another. So this is the place where you really dedicate your, yourself utterly and you sacrifice all that you are and all that you have to Scientology. Now, if you are unlucky and you have children, then these children, they need to attend this uh, cadet school, right? Now, it is there uh, mainly uh, so that they can say they have a school. And now you could technically in England, because I don't know for each country, what are the laws and things like that, if indeed that even took the laws of the country in consideration. But in England, you were able to do the EPF, the Estate Project Force, which is like boot camps before you are actually in the Sea Org. Uh, you could do that at 14. So that's interesting. I have heard different things about the rules changing within Scientology and the Sea Organization and what age they can or cannot start. I am not 100% sure what it really is today because Scientology often says a lot then does something else. But I've known for decades when I was a Scientologist, 12, 13, joining the Sea Organization, pretty much as soon as you could get through the courses. That's what I was told. When you can get through the Sea Organization courses on, on the boot camp, the Estates Project Force, you can join the Sea Org. So it wasn't so much about age. Now, they will have you go to, like he mentioned is his video, a school till you're 16, which I'm assuming is the legal dropout age there. That's what it is in most states around the U.S. as well. So they give this, you know, idea, kind of make it look like they're still going to school and all that, but really they're not. They might do some stuff, but it's really to help them be set up to pass the test so that they can actually drop out of school. All right, let's see here. Let's see if we're missing anything. Winchy Ockrist, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. Hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Peter Foster, why has Scientology never brought a deformation case, defamation case maybe, as regard to child abuse? Deformation case? Um, they have. That, that's a long answer that we don't have time for today. But if you go into YouTube and kind of Google, you know, search that up, you're going to find some answers. Freezinu project, is that why different police officers keep showing up to tell the same people to stay off the property so they don't have the same officers telling you the same things? Not sure. I know they have to respond. We've heard that from quite a few officers. It's almost like, oh, fine. Okay, don't go on their property. La, la, la. Don't yell when the door is open. Like some of them you can tell they're just, they can't be bothered with having to do this, but they have to show up. Others take a little bit more pride in it and also happen to be doing overtime work for Scientology as hired security. All right, we are now, we're going to jump in to talk about the emails that Miriam Francis released. And to give you a quick catch up, Miriam Francis is someone who was born into the C organization, was essayed by her own father. It was covered up by the C organization is still trying to be covered up by Scientology and the Sea Organization. Miriam is using her story and her voice to spread awareness, not just in Scientology that this is occurring, but really to speak up for the rights of children who don't have a voice all over, including the children who grew up in the Sea Org 
and ex- had similar experiences or experiences of abuse and have not been able to speak out about it. So she's really being a voice for a lot of people. And we're going to go through this. These are some emails that I believe she sent to John Atak regarding Mike Rinder. What I want to do, though, is let's see here. I kind of want to start. Let's see. We're going to go through a few of these, but I think it's important to share kind of Miriam's summary of it. Let's see. This was yesterday we went over and I shared a comment that she wrote on John Atak's uh, channel where this video was and is hosted. And I wanted to start with reading. This was a second comment that she made in there. And this is comment number two. This is Miriam. Her channel is Rage Against the Dark Art. Please go over and subscribe to her channel as well as uh, Nancy, can you do me a favor? Is it children of Scientology or children in Scientology? Can you share a link to that page so people can subscribe as well? Thank you. Raise Against the Dark Arts. So that's Miriam's channel. And she says, John Atak is a board member of the Aftermath Foundation and close friend of Mike Rinder. Bias? John Atak never provided Mike Rinder's answers to me, but chose instead to put it behind a paywall and, and then now posted it publicly without even letting me know. I've never been paid once for my story, not a penny, but go ahead, John. You make some money from it because you deserve it. I've addressed the details of this interview in a previous comment, but I want to state that I want to state again that I never said that I felt my story was unseen and unheard. I said that this, the full story of what happened to the children was still unseen and unheard because the crimes against them are still being whitewashed. This is a copy and paste from the actual email I sent to John Atak so that everyone can see the exact words I used. The crimes against the children continue to be unheard and unseen. One barrier is that these are still being viewed through the lens of religious experience. It was not a religious experience for us. We were trafficked from babies for labor. I'm happy to pull specific documents to support this claim. However, they all are accessible here. I included a link to the Seorg documents, which detailed decades-long horrific abuses of children on a mass scale. Watch how Mike Rinder and John Atak chuckled to themselves in this video over their beliefs that they were doing the greatest good while children were being abused. I think my point has been proven. And here is, this is the first comment and we went ahead and we shared that yesterday. So let's see. This is where, so let's hold on just a second here. Make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Yep. All right. And everybody coming in new, be sure to hit that like button on your way in. So this is an email that Miriam sent to John Atak in December of last year, asking for his help due to her concerns about Mike Rinder. Hi, John. Thank you for reviewing the information. At the time that I sent it, I had been following up with Mike Rinder with regards to a document that Australian police asked him for. I was quite concerned at the lack of attention he gave to the matter concerning the serious nature of it. I had previously asked producers for these documents, which could support my case, and was told they wouldn't be released to me due to confidentiality. I am baffled as to why they... Mike Rinder and Aftermath show producers wouldn't be more forthcoming since my story featured in an episode and Mike and Leah were there during my LAPD police report, which was included in the show. At this time, I'm still waiting for them to confirm with their lawyer as to whether my mother's affidavit that was provided to the show was kept in their records or whether it is in fact lost as Mike Rinder had suggested it would likely be. Uh, I was hoping to get an external opinion, although I understand it is just speculation. We can chat on the phone if preferred. I'm wondering if this is something I should be really concerned about or just a matter of lack of attention. And I thought it would be helpful to get an external opinion. It's just that it is distressing for me to think that a piece of evidence for my case would be handled so carelessly and there's been a complete absence of any support. And... Let's see here. So she shares 
she shares she shares multiple emails about this. And I'm going to read a little bit more of what she said. Miriam Francis, Rage Against the Dark Arts. She says, Mike Rinder is a liar. Several months before I flew to LA for the filming of Leah Remini, Scientology and the Aftermath, I provided Mike Rinder with my police statement detailing my childhood sexual assault allegations. Why is he acting like he just found out about my allegations on the set on the day of filming? Truth. The filming of the show that he is referring to took place in 2017. The screenshots I have provided is my email to Mike Rinder in 2016 which clearly states that I had reported to police in 2012. Truth. After arriving in Los Angeles to film for season two of Leah Remini's Scientology in the Aftermath, and a day or two before filming started, I met with Leah Remini, and she asked me if I would like to report it to LAPD while I was in LA. As I had already been awaiting an outcome in my police case, which had been sent from Australia to U.S. authorities, with no results thus far, I said, yes, that's a good idea. I might as well report to LAPD while I'm here, and I intended to do so myself in the course of my stay in LA. Truth, the LAPD brought to the set, the LAPD was brought to the set because it was planned by production that this would be part of the show. I did not know that was planned to occur, and I was unaware of the fact that such a meeting had been arranged. Lie. And this is from the tra- a transcript. Mike. When she started talking to us about what happened, it was Leah and I that stopped the production. We shut down production and we said to Miriam and the other woman, who I won't even name, but the other woman that was on the program, because the two of them were there together talking about their childhood essay experiences. Um, We said, we, you need to report this. This can't go unreported. And we contacted the LAPD and we arranged for the detectives to come to the set and we shut down the set. And, and then John A. Tech says, at an enormous cost, lets you know. Mike says, yeah, this. John says, a production set, all of the people working on it. That's tens of thousands of dollars being pushed aside. Mike. And um, we, Leah and I, briefed the detectives and then allowed them to do their interviews. Link to John Atak's video. So she shares a link there. And uh, there is an email here from Mike Rinder as well. Now, 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 now. Okay, good. It's Children of Scientology on YouTube. Is the other channel that you should go follow. Thank you, Nancy. Lori A. Caffel. Miriam is a voice for the voiceless. I completely agree with that. 100%. And it does seem, you know, she's sharing, I mean, she's bringing the receipts as they say, right? This is, this is what happened and clearing up. Now, sometimes people can have a conversation and you don't always get everything exactly right, but there seems to be multiple things where the facts don't line up when she shows her email And then what was said in that video in part. So I think the more that can come out, the more truth and understanding that we can have and hopefully, you know, resolve what kind of get down to what the issues really are and resolve it. And in my mind, one of those big issues is just ensuring that moving forward, that especially victims who are victims of Scientology and essay and abuse who were children at the time. It happens to adults as well. But when you talk about the voiceless, it's really the children that they are handled in a way that where there is a lot of compassion and empathy. And I think that speaks to the importance of having people involved with an organization, whether it's the Aftermath Foundation or the SPTV SPTV Foundation, who have a background in victims advocacy whether they're, you know, whatever their involvement is, but there are resources available to help them. And it might even be easier. In fact, I think it would for them to communicate these things with somebody who maybe even was never in Scientology or not in the C organization itself. It just depends on those people and where their comfort level is in that. That's, that's kind of, that's, that's what I think. You guys tell me what you think about the whole thing. Uh, Tara, I agree. How is the report confidential to the victim? That is something I don't understand either. Rihanna says, oof, there's so much wrong with that statement from Rinder. Venus Blue Jeans, this hurts my heart. Uh, 
I hear that. Uh, Cody Quinn, so shutting down production to do the right thing is her fault. Jeez, when will Mike Render? And now I think that cut off there. Um, you know, that little thing right there is kind of an example of the point that's missing, the point that's being missed. This is, and you know what I would love? I would love it. Tell me, how would you summarize the core issue? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comments. Email me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. There has to, and I, I'm honestly, I don't have the words for it yet to really succinctly identify what the issue is when it comes to, Miriam is an example. This is one of these examples of how a victim was ha- you know, handled or not handled in this situation. And it seems to be, in my mind, when I visualize it, it's there's people who have an intention to do good and help. And I do believe that the Aftermath Foundation intends to continue to do good work in helping people leave Scientology and the C organization. But there's this like miss in the communication where, you know what I'm saying? So I, I guess what I'm saying is I would like to lean on my never in friends here and say, tell me in the comments, the chat, or email me, how would you summarize what the issue is, because we can go round and round all day for days and weeks about who said what, what's right, what's wrong. And sometimes that needs to be done. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying at the end of the day, what can we do to ensure that this doesn't happen again? What can we do to ensure that the right people, voices, organizations are put in place so that victims feel heard, protected, and safe? when they're sharing something that's so difficult and vulnerable. So you guys tell me what you think. And then I think we'll, uh, we'll definitely be talking more about it. Cody's saying, I wonder if Leah Remedy is beginning to think that Mike Rinder may be a liability to her rather than helpful. I don't know. Is it, tell me, is that how you guys, is that how you guys see it? Nicole says he has zero empathy. I think that's part of the issue that comes across, but it's not being heard. This isn't about what someone did before to help put a lens on and raise awareness about Scientology. Trini, problem. They don't understand constructive criticism and that people are trying to help them further their cor- their cause. They aren't also listening to the criticism to learn from their mistakes. I Yeah, I get that. I get that. That actually makes sense. Blake Reed, the issue is apathy. He's feeling the pressure and he thinks by releasing that interview, he can throw it away, away with a yawn, as one might say. I do also believe that, at least this is what I think. I think that, I think Mike Rinder might feel that he's being misunderstood, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think he is being understood and that is the problem. There's, there's a lacking of a certain viewpoint here. Creepy old lady says the issue is that at last some new members of the, a- of the Aftermath Foundation board, Rinder in particular, don't take SA seriously. It could be. It could be. This is just funny. Susan, so I'm 69 years old young. I can still do the squirrel team smash. <laughs> Susan, that is funny. That is funny. We got our grandma nation out there. <laughs> okay, so Ison says, Aftermath Foundation helps people escaping, but only if they are subservient and only if they can make money from their story. And once they are out, F you and stop complaining and do not question. That 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 is that is a sentiment that has been repeated. So that's how it's being received. If I was the only one where I felt, you know, had some of these thoughts or concerns about it, I probably may not even bring it up, but I hear so much about it from all of you and it's a repeated theme. That's why I think if we can really narrow in on it, maybe there's a way to communicate it that it could be heard. I don't know. It could be a total lost cause, but you know me, I'm always like, but wait, if we could communicate more, maybe we could resolve this. (laughs) Catherine says Mike Rinder claimed Miriam's story was too big not to tell and cult of Scientology could be brought down by it. He messed up bad in how he handled her after he forgot it isn't about him. I get that. I get that. 
You know, we are also going to take a look at, I want to share with you guys, let me find it here. Down the rabbit hole news, Rabbit did kind of an overview and gave some thoughts on this. And I really value her opinion because she is somebody in that world. Her background with social services and victim advocacy is real. It's real and it's real world. And so from that perspective, it's like she knows what she's talking about. And I like to listen to her take on this because of that. So let's let's take a little look at what she had to say about it. Let's just pull that up. And this is down the rabbit hole news. You and Leah sat down with her and said, we think you should report this to the LAPD. And um, John, why don't you let Mike talk? That's, I think that's the biggest, let, let him talk. He can fill in these blanks. And um, Helped her, took her to the, the police. So you'd be doubly stupid if you were actually getting somebody who mm -hmm. you had, you know, had some involvement in, in harming to, to report this thing and then going and campaigning. So this is, this is a serious contradiction if such a thing has happened. Yes, serious. Um, Miriam has said, in, 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 and this has all happened very rapidly. It's only, I think, on Saturday that, that, that I saw this and I asked Miriam to. So this is when I found out that this had already been recorded uh, clearly weeks before. I believe it was uploaded on a Patreon and then uh, uploaded on YouTube just this weekend. To, to send me statements she read out on escaping down the rabbit hole. And she. My channel's name is escaping down the rabbit hole now. Right. <laughs> That's my channel's name. Okay, sure. Feels that, you know, from that statement, she was bullied um, into making a statement um, and, and going into details of her abuse. And we have to have sympathy for that. By the show? Is yeah. That, yeah. The she's show saying bullied her the, into making the produce, statements? The producer um, insisted on having more details than she was willing to offer at the time. Okay. Um, and, and it's for her to judge how she feels about that. Of course. Um, and but we have to say that she'd been flown from Australia. She knew she was there to talk about it. Having dealt with uh, victims of abuse myself a fair few oh. times over the last 40 years. Um, he has dealt with victims of abuse himself. It's great. Definitely check out that video over on Down the Rabbit Hole News because she she just has a great perspective as a victim's advocate of what she shares. And I think that that's so helpful. I think that's very helpful. Gail says, uh, hi, Natalie. The only thing growing is SPTV and Scientology protesting. Great news about you being a born member of SP Found SPTV Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Vintage, Vintage Mama of Three says, Mike Rinder thinks he should be on a pedestal and he is, he is can say nothing wrong. Days by Dogs, I just feel that he is torn between his need to stay innocent of the crimes of cult of Scientology and his desire to stop cult of Scientology. You know, that could be, that could be. And I, I want to say again, it's like, I've been frustrated and disappointed in things, in, in very specific actions um, and responses. And it's because of the work in the past. And I know we've said like, hey, you can't, you can do all this good work, but you got to, you know, like raise the bar on how you treat and handle victims in Scientology. It does not cancel that out. And I think that's kind of the point. And I feel it's a very stuck sense Scientology mentality to believe that because in the C organization in Scientology, if your statistics are up, right, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in your statistics or trading, trading upward, trending upward. L. Ron Hubbard says that you have ethics protection, meaning you can't get into trouble for things that that protects you, that that's this ethics protection in the real world outside of Scientology and the C organization. That is not the case. Somebody's good works can stand on their own, but it can be overshadowed by actions that people find offensive or are bothered by. But it doesn't make less of the good works, but it doesn't give any protection over here when you're doing, behaving, acting, or saying things that are being perceived as being disrespectful to victims. And I think that that is part of the disconnect because in Scientology and the Sea Org, you might get ethics protection, supposedly, didn't always happen if your statistics are up. 
And I think that's why we'll often hear the, and it's not, not just limited to Mike Rinder. There's been other people too. Well, I've done this and I've done that and I've done this and I've done that. And that is so great. And I know that I can speak for myself. I appreciate it. Much of the actions that Mike Rinder took when I was leaving Scientology helped me and my family to leave Scientology. That is just a fact. Him included. That is just a fact. And I will always be grateful for that. It just doesn't cancel, cancel out these things here. And I honestly and truly wish there was a way to have that conversation to help him to understand, you know, just that there's kind of a different way. Because outside of Scientology and the Sea Org, the world just doesn't work like that. It doesn't. There just comes a time sometimes where you just got to say, you just have to listen. And sometimes there's not even a, a response beyond, I'm so sorry that that happened. And to work to create a safe space where a victim doesn't feel attacked or undermined or that things are being hidden. And whether that's being done or not, or what the reason is for it, you know, we may or we may not, may not never know, but it's something I think we can learn from and hopefully not make those same mistakes again. Thanks for the links, Nancy. Days by dogs, if Mike Render truly cared about former members, he would just spill all of it and worry about making amends for what he did later. Voice of one crying. The fact Scientologists believe that children are adults in small bodies is really an indication that the adults are running the cult, that the adults running the cult are no more emotionally, mentally, spiritually mature than toddlers. There's truth in that. I would say that about myself when I was in Scientology that for a while there, I did not have, I would not, I learned more about emotional intelligence after years after being out of Scientology. And I would say that that emotional intelligence is not something that is nurtured in Scientology. You're just more reactionary, especially in the C organization. When it, you know, there's multiple faces of Scientology. There's the public facing, and then there's what actually happens within the organization. Eisen says the problem is Rinder is a narcissist and he had power in the cult of Scientology and also during the show years. He can't handle questioning or concerns. For him, everything is an attack of his person. I get that. And I will also say too that it's, I can see how, you know, if that's how he sees it or feels that, that it comes across that way. There have been a lot of attacks, but there's also been a lot of people I think especially with people in the never end community and even the ex Scientology community who've been like, Hey, Mike, or, or, you know, other people on the aftermath foundation board, we actually are trying to help you by saying, this is not the way to do this, that out in the world, these are how these things work. It's a different playbook. And really from that, that place of wanting to create some change and make it better. But often that's received as just that it's an attack. And sometimes they are outright attacks. Let's be honest. We need to own that. There have been things that have been outright attacks and not helpful on both ends of that. But I've seen more of the situation where people, I've gotten so many emails where they just wish there's something they could say to get through to certain members of the Aftermath Foundation Board to understand that there is a bit of a different way, a softer approach. So I, I recognize that. I recognize that as well. And I think that I've seen so many heartfelt and heartbreak, heartbreak for many, myself included. Like I said, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. Blow drill. Alex is a great and qualified voice of an outside perspective. I value her views and opinions. Me too. Me too. Creepy old lady, Mike Rinder has a problem that many selfish people have. He thinks everyone else is as selfish as he is. When they aren't, he misjudges the whole situation. Could be. So Maria has a question. Isn't it troubling that nobody is coming out saying how the Aftermath Foundation has helped them? Why? I feel like has it, hasn't there been? Has there not been? I mean, well... I know that I've heard from individuals who have said how much the Aftermath Foundation did help them. Um, I'm thinking about that. I need to think about that. <laughs> that could be a point. Could be a point. Mary Reno says Rabbit's video was terrific. Glad you saw that. 
they're definitely, there's some definite strong, strong opinions, but I feel like we're getting closer to maybe figuring this out. Like I said, my, on a personal level, I have an interest in, I like to understand things, people and situations from as many different points of view as I can, because then we could maybe have some better understanding and ensure that this doesn't happen again in another situation with another victim, right? To, to be able to learn from it. I, I think it's a, it is, if nothing else, it's a learning experience. Corn freak. Thank you so much for that. Alex, the rabbit is my spirit animal. <laughs> I love that. Buckled up buttercup. ATAC was a deprogrammer. That is true. I don't know a lot about his history as a deprogrammer. So you guys tell me in the comments or in the chat, what do you know about that? Jill, from what I heard, I can understand Mike being defensive in terms of the years that he had spoken out and experienced fair gaming. This does not mean he's perfect and it cannot be called out. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a really good summary because it just, we're all imperfect, right? Most of us are just trying our best and showing up and doing what we can to expose Scientology. We're going to mess up. We're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to say the right thing. We're going to, and it's going to mean different things to different people. They're going to take it different ways. They're going to interpret it different ways. That's just human nature and how it is. And I think what I find so interesting about this is there's such a strong, large number of people saying the same thing about this and how it hits them. Blow drill. What I noticed is that Mike Rinder and uh, John Atak seem to think that tolerating others is okay. It's when we lead with acceptance over the expectation of tolerance, in my opinion. That is true. That is true. And I think about that too. And that's why I feel on one hand, I'm like, I, I respect so much of the work that what the Aftermath Foundation has done in terms of exposing Scientology, what Mike Rinder himself has done, what the Headleys have done in the past as well. There's, there's a lot there that goes back years. And is it just a matter of this is personality and where they at and who they are and it's probably not going to change and this is just how it is. And if that is just how it is, do you choose to just accept that and take the good with the bad or does does the negativity of it outweigh that? And I, I think that might be, you know, remain to be seen. I just want to understand it. Tommy's sees cat. Thank you so much for that super chat. It all goes back to the disgust many feel for Rinder for how he treated his close friend, Aaron. Ah, that's true. I feel Mike Rinder would have helped Miriam if he had his old friends near like the one who gave him a job and it was dangerous to do so. That is true. And that is part of the problem when, if there's an echo chamber of only having people that you agree with, that's not, in my opinion, a way to go about it. I think that, I, I think disagreement leads to growth because you can have an idea here and an idea here. And they may both be good ideas, but there's some disagreements there. So you put them together, you talk it through. Sometimes it might get heated. That's okay. But then you come to a solution, you come to a way of moving forward. And I think that that can be achieved when you put the goal and what you're doing ahead of your own ego and your own personal gain for it. And don't personalize it. A foundation is a foundation. Right. That in my mind, the SP the the S the SPTV Foundation is everybody, everybody who contributes to this. If you're here watching, liking a video, if you decide that, hey, even if you've never been in Scientology, we like to stay on this channel. Never in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. It all it all matters. All that energy and that effort just matters and makes a difference. Degraded daughter, hey there. Good morning, Natalie. A huge congratulations to you on being a board member of the new SPTV Foundation. Thank you. So proud of you. Excited to see all the good works you and the other board members will do. Yes, and everybody here. That's kind of like like to my point. Even you know, degraded daughter. What you're doing on your channel. What you're doing to spread awareness. All of it together. We are all doing it. It'll be fun. It'll be exciting. I'm crazy in, in head. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. 
Uh, okay, let's see. I just want to make sure we get to as many as these as possible. The R, the Aristocat, as a never in, I could see Mike Rinder a mile away, but he's still BSing his way through, hoping for more red carpet. <laughs> you know, and that is a thing. That is a thing. I, I've heard that. That's why I love so much the opinions. I think sometimes the more distance you have from something, the more clearly you can see it. Ah, uh, thanks for the merch link, Nancy. We do have new merch, especially for the never ends. We took that never in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. We put it on some stuff and I think it's fabulous. Jill says, I think this interview was a mistake for John Atak. Mike Rinder seems to think that he is aftermath and those around him seem to agree. The TV show and the foundation are about Scientology. Yeah, that's what I mean by it's, it's not a person. You know, these, these foundations are all of these people who contribute to it. As a board member, you're voting on who, you know, on what gets done with the funds, right? And organizational things. But this is such a larger movement than that. And it's not personal. It's, it's, it's something that we're all doing, that everybody's doing together is how I see it. Rhea, I'm glad. This really helped me understand the render situation. Thanks. Okay, good. I think we're all starting to wrap our heads around it, maybe. Afila says, uh, him saying that there are two categories of people and us viewers are not important really tells me everything I need to know about him. That's the kind of thing where I just go, oi, help me help you. <laughs> that That is a good example. The keyboard warriors, the dogs and fleas, just those things are very invalidative to people who are contributing and who matter. These same keyboard warriors and people who watch are the people who contribute financially, not just to the foundation, but to individual members when they need help as well. So they do matter, matter in a big way, matter in a big way. You guys keep showing up. I keep showing up. If you didn't show up, I wouldn't be able to do this. And what would it matter what I had to say? That's how it works. That's how it is. I have so much, and you guys know this, I, this, this coming together of community of ex-Scientologists and people never in Scientology and First Amendment auditors and all this coming together, I think it's a perfect storm to bring down Scientology and all of you using your voice and your time and your energy to contribute to this in any way that you do is so appreciated and it matters and it makes a difference. I have the total opposite point of view. I think from Mike and others when it comes to that. Pippi Longstocking says, uh, OG members of the Aftermath Foundation may not be ill-willed. It appears that their trauma doesn't allow them to access the understanding needed to help victims struggling on an emotional level. They just can't. That could very well be true. To, you know what? I And I do. I, I don't believe, and you know, maybe I'm naive about it. I don't believe they're ill-willed. I think a lot of this is a very, is a certain mindset that you get, especially it's a mindset I've seen in Scientology and the C organization, but at the same time, it's also a personality trait. So it's kind of like, which is it, right? Is it not letting go of Scientology and C org thinking, or is it just a personality trait? And this is who that person is, because if that is it, and it's not going to change, I can also from where I sit go, okay, I get it. I'm likely not going to agree with cer certain actions. But I agree and I support the things being done to expose Scientology. That what Dylan what Blodrill was talking about with acceptance. We can't control what people are going to do. And I know that I appreciate anything someone does to raise awareness about Scientology being a human trafficking cult. It doesn't mean I'm going to agree with them if, on everything, but I can accept that. And I'm beginning to think that maybe that is just what it is. These are just personalities and bringing more people onto the Aftermath Foundation board will hopefully help. Hopefully. There just needs to be more diversity of opinion and view there. It shouldn't be an echo chamber. It shouldn't. And same goes for the SBTV Foundation too. And I honestly tell you, I, I I don't think it is an echo chamber. There's different personalities and there's not always, I don't see from 
our interactions on SPTV even. There, we have different points of view and bringing those things together can really, really do some good. But it doesn't mean it's always, yeah, I totally agree with you on everything. No, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But that's where growth comes from. And I so respect when somebody has an opinion that's different and they raise that opinion and they say, you know, I don't see it that way. This is how I see it. This is what I think we should do. Even if people don't agree with that, because that's the only way we grow. If it's just yes, 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 without questioning, then, you know, it can happen. I mean, you don't want that all the time, <laughs> but I think you get the point. I think I've hammered it enough. There should be differences of opinion. As long as you have the emotional intelligence to work and talk through it, we can all learn from it. We can all learn from it. GM Flower says emotional intelligence not allowed, only anger and deceit to say the least. Yeah, that seems to be a that seems to be a theme. My Tony says uh, Blow Drill will be an awesome board member. Congratulations, Dylan. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. Dylan Blow Drill has such an amazing point of view. I I wish Blow Drill, you need to do more videos just because I want to watch. I've had him on the channel a couple times and will continue to, but his point of view. It really is something. If you guys watch this video and subscribe to his channel at Blow Drill, you will see. You will see. You need to do more of that. I want to see more of that. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. We are. Okay. Uh, just another reminder. A couple of reminders. A couple of housekeeping points here. But first, Larry B. Thank you so much for that. Can't wait for the book to come out to about Mike Rinder stuff. Book to come out. Too about my grinder stuff. Larry B. <laughs> Do you mean you got to tell me whose book are you, which book are we talking about? See, blow drill right here. Acceptance comes with healthy boundaries. Yes. And I think that just might be it because we cannot control what other people do, right? But we can discuss it and try to have some acceptance and put some boundaries there. I like that. Ooh, Blake Reed, disagreements are the seeds of resolve. Yeah, I had not heard that before. And that that resonates. That makes sense. Thank you. I agree, Creepy B5, we as a community have expanded. Calico26, thank you so much for the super chat. Miriam said in a comment she didn't know that John was in talks to be on the board of the aftermath. And he never told her that. I feel so bad for her. Yeah. That seems like it might have been an important thing to bring up. Angela Von Hale. Yes, only diversity of opinion and personalities can bring better results. Often frustrating, but one has to try and neutralize emotional blindness. That's so true. That is so true. Okay. Oh, and someone's bringing up too, Ann Casales, Liz Ferris, Liz Gale, Mike Brown, and his mom, Rosemary, Serge O. Serge Obolinsky, and more. The Aftermath, Aftermath Foundation is not only Mike Rinder, but a whole team started by Louise and Aaron. That's true. Those are some of the people that the Aftermath Foundation has helped to get counseling to, I mean, financially, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So again, later today, I think that uh, some of these questions, I think we, we kind of answered, but I'm going to be doing an interview with Jenna Miscavige at four o'clock central time. If you cannot catch it live, catch it on the replay. Danny Mack, when are you in Clearwater? Middle of the month. Let's just say that. Towards the middle of the month, we're finalizing some things, but it looks like it's going to be the middle of the month, right around there. Um, always choose kindness. I just want to know what was Mike Rinder's reason for not giving money from the foundation to her. It really doesn't seem right since they were the ones sent right since we're the ones that have donated money to help. I don't have an answer to that. And it is a board decision. It's not just Mike Rinder's decision. So I don't, I don't know. I actually don't, I don't know. Uh, 
I do not know. I got to go back and catch up on all these comments and stuff because you guys got so many good ones. Lumi, Lumi Dawa, Slimetology didn't see how social media would be the end of them, right? Totally true. Can't wait for the limited series on Netflix. Who will portray Natalie? <laughs> Obviously, Beyonce. <laughs> I think I'm older than her. In fact, I know that I am. Wouldn't that be something to have a Netflix thing? I, I think there needs to be an, and you know, at some point somebody's going to, because there's so many aspects of this. It could be a limited series. It could just go on and on because there's so many points to this story of exposing Scientology. There's so many different people involved. I mean, talk about a cast of characters and let's be honest, there isn't an entertainment value that's there. And I'm not bothered by people coming and watching and learning about this, enjoying because it's entertaining. That's fine. I'm, I'm all for it. I, there's times when I find it entertaining. But in the process of being entertained, you learn, you find out, you become educated. And then next thing you know, you're up in arms about Scientology and you want to do something to raise awareness about this cult. So come for the entertainment and stay for the activism. I think that's totally fine. And Danny Mac, let's have a big SP Squirrel Squad party in Clearwater. That would be so much fun. So much fun. All right, you guys just have more amazing comments than I can keep up with. Hey, Carrie Ann, great to see you. Mike Rinder has made it clear by his comments that the criticism he's received has affected him as well as CHAS. Okay, so let's see. I am not sure who all those people are, but, oh, maybe Mark Headley. I'm not sure, but people, people. <laughs> he complains how hard it's been. That's proof that the protesters' tactics work. Yep, Carrie Ann, love seeing you out there in Portland, shutting it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Okay. That's right, Lavender Bridges, Blake Reed, Old Soul. So Fish Mom 2011 says, I think the thing that really bothers me about MR's, Mike Rinder's handling of this mess is he seems to be tone deaf to the way his words and actions are further victim, further victimization of her. I, I would agree with that. And I think that's kind of the point. I think that's kind of the point. And I think that's where sometimes personality plays in, you know, is sometimes it's when you are and believe a certain way, it's hard to hide that on your face and body language is huge. Oh God, I could just sit here all day reading all your comments, but I need to get going and you guys do too. <laughs> I am going to re keep reading those. Jules Fireworks, thank you so much for the super chat. Trashy found a billboard across from Chicago Org. Please get with him for info. I'm dying to see SPTV Foundation there. <laughs> That's cool. Interesting to know. Larry B, thank you so much for gifting a membership. Thank you, Larry. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> Okay, I'm wrapping up. If you can, join the live, 4 p.m. my time, central time, my interview with Jenna Miscavige. We will talk more about the SP SPTV Foundation, share some news, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including why she bit somebody. <laughs> Trying to get away from Scientology. So much more, so much more. So stay tuned, hit that like button on your way out, please. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed as well. That support means everything to me and hit that notification bell too. So you know when I do these interviews. So get out there everybody and just have the most amazing cult-free day. <laughs>